been a couple of weeks since my surgery. And it's been a difficult recovery. Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Anyone who has lost weight will tell you that the transformation is much more than before and after photos and has a lot of struggle behind it. Although it doesn't go well for everyone on My 600 Pound Life, most people get successful surgery and lead a healthy life after it, and a few others gain back the weight they had lost. While My 600 Pound Life shows how devastating obesity could be, there are also some very awkward moments on it, and in this video, we will be sharing the 10 most embarrassing and odd moments of them all. Let's begin. Number 10. Ironically, Teresa Colley was a former health coordinator who was fully aware of the hazards of overeating, but still ended up being over 800 pounds. She had been bedridden for two whole years before she decided on pursuing a weight loss program with Dr. Now. She had to be carried by nine firefighters to get her out of the house and in the van so she could be taken to Houston to see the doctor. Her son had to take care of her everything and even used to bathe her since her husband couldn't do it anymore due to his diabetes. In the first two months, she lost about 210 pounds, but was still reluctant to stand up, claiming she couldn't. A month later, Dr. Now sent her home since she had managed to get extra food and cheat in the hospital. She insisted that an operation for her lipidemia would improve her mobility, and when she got that surgery, it really helped her a lot. At the end of her episode, she managed to lose about half of her weight and even started walking with assistance. Number 9. Reality TV shows aren't always genuine, at least according to My 600 Pound Life star Dottie Perkins, who claimed in a lawsuit against Megalomedia, the producer of the show, that her story in the show was fabricated and some of the scenes had been staged and edited to make it look like she was gaining weight when she was clearly told to lose it and when in actuality she was dropping pounds after seeing Dr. Now. According to her, to support the defendant's narrative, Megalomedia created a dynamic where a plaintiff would not follow the diet. To do this, they forced the plaintiff to eat an excessive amount of unhealthy and fattening food, which would lead to confrontations with Dr. Now, in which he'd blatantly criticize her for not following the diet plan. The lawsuit also stated that Perkins also ended up being hospitalized on the show to have her diet monitored, although she was already losing weight according to the plan she had been given. What do you think about this one? Do you think Perkins is right, or is she making it up to hide the embarrassment of gaining weight on national TV? Tell us in the comments below. Number 8. When Joyce Del Vescavo decided to participate in this show, she likely didn't realize that she'd be monitored so closely and didn't actually know what she was signing up for. She was denied surgery at one point because rather than losing weight as the plan said, she gained 11 pounds. But Dr. Now was optimistic for her and she even lost weight initially, and Dr. Now was happy about her improvement. She wanted to get discharged from the hospital to see if she could maintain her new lifestyle on her own and take care of herself, but ended up gaining 58 pounds during her stay at home, and she even missed several appointments. Joyce assured the doctor that she was following the diet plan given to her and was also working out, and justified her weight gain by saying that it might only be water weight, but the doctor dismissed it, saying it just wasn't realistic. Joyce even decided to fake a heart attack to get out of the situation without being blamed, but eventually it was uncovered that she was faking the heart attack completely. Number 7. When Joe Weschler first joined the show, he weighed almost 800 pounds, which was no surprise at all, as he used to consume food as an emotional crutch, consuming almost 10,000 calories per day. Things were soon out of hand and he knew that he needed to lose some weight when he realized that he couldn't stand on his own feet anymore. The most embarrassing moment for him was when he had to call an ambulance once when he fell on the floor and realized the gravity of his issue. Fortunately, Joe was able to get help from Dr. Now, who performed gastric bypass surgery on him after he lost 140 pounds on his own. Then, he managed to get skin removal surgery, losing an incredible 500 pounds. Number 6. Janine Muller had put on so much weight that her knees were damaged and couldn't carry her weight, and she had to use an electric scooter to carry her around. By the end of her episode in Season 6, she managed to drop her weight to 566 pounds, but her path wasn't that smooth. During the beginning of her program, she was often found arguing with Dr. Now 
and she even lied to him about her diet and lost only one pound in a week instead of one pound per day, as she had been told. The most interesting part of the episode was when Janine decided that she couldn't resist her urges anymore and took her scooter to a drive through to order a large meal of chicken nuggets, despite being part of a freak show, as she would call the program. Number 5. Dr. Now is a real-life superhero for many of my 600-pound life patients. Though many praised him for saving their lives by gastric bypass surgeries, he has also had some patients that weren't that happy with him, and Michelle Park was one of them. She claimed that Dr. Now had left a tube inside her in a procedure he performed in 2012, and two years later, it punctured her colon. According to a lawsuit filed by Michelle, she lost part of her colon and went through extreme mental anguish and physical pain, along with the financial problems she had to face. Though her malpractice lawsuit claimed surgery expenses, loss of income, pain, mental anguish, and disfigurement, she decided to dismiss it in 2013, which led to many speculations that an out-of-court negotiation had been done between her and the doctor. What do you think about it? Number 4. Samantha Mason was dangerously close to dying due to her 1,000-pound weight that induced other health problems too. To make matters worse, she was paid to eat by making videos online. She was known as Vanilla Hippo Online and had exploited her weight in every possible way to provide for herself and her family. She finally realized that her weight was too high and that she could possibly die before reaching her life goals. And that was when she decided to turn her life around and sought help from Dr. Now, who helped her to reach an optimum weight. But sadly, there wasn't any ambulance in the entire state of Colorado which was big enough to transport her to Houston to meet the doctor. Not wanting to wait and risking things even more, Dr. Now teamed up with Dr. Amir Hadari, who is a bariatric surgeon and used to perform high-risk emergency surgeries, and he did surgery on Samantha to save her life. After a long journey, Samantha once posted a photo on Twitter in which her face looked a lot slimmer than it was while she was on the show. Number three. My 600 Pound Life's Charity Pierce had come a long way since her introduction to viewers, and she had some very tricky moments during her weight loss journey. She had managed to drop almost 500 pounds from her peak weight of 778 pounds, and her daughter Charlie had also decided to get serious about her health. After the episode aired, Charity accused the producers of the show of what she said was a total mischaracterization of the events of her follow-up. She said that they had tried to show it as if her daughter Charlie and another member of her family were possibly engaged in an incestuous relationship. She did say that all of them had some mental issues like bipolar, depression, anxiety, and panic attacks, but incest was not one of them. Number 2 Unlike a few participants on the show, Crystal Hall was able to move unassisted and could also do her chores around the house even after weighing over 600 pounds. She is a wife and a mother to one, and her husband was very supportive and was always by her side in times of her sickness. The problem was with her son Josh. As she says in the episode, he was embarrassed to be seen with her, and that depressed her the most. He didn't like being seen with her in public. At an airport once, both mother and son were together, and Josh was acting weird. Crystal knew she was a big mom and couldn't do anything about it, so she asked her son to cover his face so he feels less embarrassed. That must have been such a sad moment for Crystal as a mom. Number 1 Liz Evans' weight had gotten so out of control that she couldn't stand on her feet, let alone walking and doing her everyday errands. She was only 35 years old and weighed a whole 721 pounds. She was shown to be lying in her bed for most of the part of her two-hour long episode. The worst part was that she was even unable to turn on her side while lying down or bathe herself and needed constant support from someone. So her elderly mother, a cousin, and an elderly aunt were kind enough to take care of her. Liz was born with one leg shorter than the other and underwent a lot of surgeries that left her with a limp. After she became depressed at a very young age and struggled with her mental health, she started to gain weight rapidly. She was at a stage very close to death due to being morbidly obese, and she even had growths on her legs due to her condition. She had to be transported in an extra-wide ambulance to Houston to meet Dr. Now. Luckily, after a long program, Liz was able to lose 353 pounds 
and was able to stand on her feet and take a few steps with the help of a therapist. Wasn't her journey amazing? Which of these journeys did you find the most interesting? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe.